The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everyone. Bowser Chapman here sitting in for Tommy O'Brien. Uh, he's, he's making a fabulous recovery. He discussed it yesterday. <clears throat> had an operation, and I think he's in the healing process. You can actually sign. To, uh, it'll be great to have him back full-time, but slow, slow and steady is the way to go. We're looking at the Dow futures down. Oh, let me just get to that right now. That's the YM contract. <clears throat> down uh, 59 at 39,137. Let me go through uh, each thing uh, in, uh, individually. For those of you who are not used to my work, I may have a very simple technique, uh, that's the core of the technique, where I try to identify a low bar as the start of a bigger move up, and then I count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them on the way up, capital letters way up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but it's that fourth highest peak, D, where other things can happen. You can see right here, there's a D at 40,358. In the daily uh, YM around about April the 1st, and look at that turn down going to the 37,500 level. But it's at D that other things can happen. That's where you can have an instant restart. Within three bars, you make a higher high. That can take you to a whole brand new four peaks to the upside, or it could be the steepest decline. But that's the objective, to go from a buy signal upgraded to a buy mode, meaning that there should be at least four higher peaks Peak A is the first, peak B, higher peak C, then the fourth one is peak D. That's where other things can happen. That's the target. That's where you have to reassess. So where are we? We're in B. The technicals are strong. The nine periods over the 14. The MACD is strong. See this gray line? Let me get the right pointer right there. Uh, yeah, the relative strength index is very strong. The stochastic Above 80% is good. Above 90% is really, if you're bullish, you want it over 80, 85%. You especially want it over 90. And if it's a 95, you want it flat and holding. And that's what we're going to see into next week because it'll take at least until Wednesday to make a peak D if every other day there's a, there's a high and a low. So we'll be watching that closely. And the stochastic at 95% is really strong. On balance volume is still good. It's not yet overbought. So, and within that context, look at the weekly chart, that green nine period moving average. I don't know if I should discuss that now. Yeah, I'll just do it if I've got it. Yeah, if I've got it. So I've used this as a wonderful, uh, called the indicator of last resort. It's really a fantastic tool if you want to use it. Um, look, with that nine period moving average in the, uh, this is the daily chart of the Dow, when it crossed positive on November the 3rd, over the, it goes green when it goes over the black line, which is the 14 period moving average. Pink when it goes under it, it held you in that position all the way through until look what happened on the 4th of April. It went pink, and then a few days ago it went back to green, and that's a really positive uh, situation. So we're looking at this as positive right now. There should be high highs to come. You have to use other techniques to say how high, but in the meantime, this is still a big positive. Down 54 on the daily. Weekly is still strong because that nine period moving average managed to hold green, even though with a big pullback uh, to the 37,500 area. And it's only a peak C in the month, and it should still go to a D. Okay, let's get on with this. Go to the E mini continuous contract. Um, holding very nicely, up 2.75 right now. F52,015 2015 made a peak B. It should still get to a peak C above. Uh, 52.18, that was the high. Whoops, did I do something wrong? 52.26.7, I was saying, what was wrong? 52.26.75, the high of the um, 7th of May. And we'll see if it does. The, the quicker you get to the next leg up, the stronger the moves. So this is very positive. You see the weekly chart is still very strong. Monthly chart has made a D, and we'll see how this closes out the month of May. Uh, let's go to the NQ, which is the, uh, there we go, NQ. 
Um, at the inside, there's a technique that I developed. Now I can change the color. I was going to do it earlier on. And I thought, no, I, I'm just running out of time. In fact, I'm running out of time to the extent that I haven't even had a look at the, the update of the E-mini since uh, I'm, I want to do that right now at 9, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So this is a brand new peak, A, peak, B. Uh, this is a leg F to the upside, F slash B. And there's your D. We're always looking for Ds in the E-mini 10-minute chart. We've just gone to a leg D from the low that was made just after 5 a.m. this morning. Went above the 200 period moving average. That's very good. Okay, I like to do this live, how the Chapman Wave methodology works. This is something where you don't have to look back and say, oh, it was this, it was that. You're looking at live and you're saying, this is what should happen, and it either does or it doesn't to verify the technique. So here we are looking at this inside track repellent zone in the NQ. It needs to not just go above it. It needs to establish that it could turn into a base rather than a repellent. And you want to see it by today's Thursday, I'd say by Monday sometime, you want to see it up at the 19,300 level. Whoa, did I say 19? I meant 18,350 level. And here it is at 18,203. And there's a Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. Ooh, another technique, huh? So this technique here is, let me just see if I can, yeah. This is where the price goes higher, and then it starts to decline and make lower highs, and much lower lows, and then all of a sudden it finds a base. Let me move this over now. It finds a base of support, and it takes out that lower diagonal trend line, and then it could go one to one to the upside. Well, if that's the case. It should, there could be in the weekly chart a really nice move at some point in the summer where we go from the 17,000 to the 18,200 resistance we're at now, and then have a move that takes you to new all-time highs leg D in the monthly chart. So this is a very important moment. Uh, talking about the month of May. We'll see how we, we resolve it. In the meantime, back at the ranch, uh, NQ is holding well. Let's go to the RTY, which was lagging yesterday, but today is coming back a little bit. Up 260 at 2067. There's a Russell 2000 continuous contract. Doing very nicely, uh, having gone to this peak seas, pulling back, did a one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, and it broke this falling axe um, pattern to the upside. It needs much more. It really needs to get to the 2100s as a 2067 by next week. If it does that, that's going to help the weekly chart, which is still pretty good. All right, now I want to go to gold. So the gold contract is now down to a 2320. One of the things that I use, remember we were speaking about that nine period moving average? Look, it went pink. And look how the, the gold contract has struggled to close above it. And that just tells you that this is signaling that, especially with the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence week, the relative strength week, the unbalanced uh, volume, the blue line, making lower lows and lower highs, and the stochastic only at 26%, that gold is holding really well, but it's not showing the upside uh, um the, the the kind of strength, the momentum that you need to break into the 2350 and higher level at this particular point. Look at silver, though. Silver's doing very nicely. It's up 33 cents at 29.94 in the continuous contract. It's broken above the resistance. The average cross. It's a daily chart. You have to wait for the end. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien, and he's uh, making a great recovery. We'll ho hopefully you'll see a lot more of him next week. We'll see. Um, anyway, I just wanted to show you this. This is silver. This is the iShares Silver Trust. See, it's just about to break out of that resistance level. Uh, the MACD um, is weak. The stochastic is improving, but it's only at 35 percent. It needs to be over 80 percent for me to feel comfortable. Um, the nine period moving average, this blue line, is just it's it's doing okay, and the relative strength is doing okay. But what's interesting is that the silver itself, the silver contract, the actual chart, even though this is the this should parallel exactly, there's just a slight difference. And if you're used to it by eye, you can see that the breakout here in this leg B in the daily chart for silver is suggesting that more importantly, it's not so much how high it can go. What you want to find out is are the characteristics that suggest that it's making a cup formation and just beautiful the way these things work. In it's just the cycle of patterns in the market. Talking about patterns, don't forget tomorrow, live trading. Larry Pesavante has had two fabulous uh, workshops. Well, he's had a lot of fabulous workshops, but in this new um, phase that he's doing two Fridays a month, uh, had really good results. So if you're interested in the futures contracts and just learning different techniques, Larry, it should be a fabulous program. Tomorrow, I think he's starting, uh, well, it's early in the morning, and just check out the front page of TFNN. Highly, highly, highly recommended. All right, we're looking at the silver contract. Now let's just do it. Um, the reason why I want to spend just a moment on this is that the silver has a cup formation. How markets make this elision, how it makes this, this you know, quarter of a semicircle is called a quarrel. And uh, within, that, within that designation, 
What I wanted to say is, uh, if I can just turn this around here, yeah. What I, I wanted to talk about the Quora is um, that half the semicircle over there in the daily. You're starting to get something like it here in the in the in the on the right side. Let's I'll skip it for a moment. The weekly, you can see the weekly is a work in, in, in progress. There's a very sharp pullback from that peak D. Remember, peak D is your objective. It can go higher, but D is where you have to do another analysis. So that's a, quite a sharp pullback. But if you're looking at the monthly chart, this Chapman Wave inverted Roman candle. I, should I spend a... a I'll build up a couple of uh, a week's worth of candles, and I, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll either do one of my Friday shows or I'll have a webinar based on the uh, Chapman Wave notation that I discovered years ago that I call the um, Roman candle. Okay, look at this long wick and a body over here halfway uh, from the wick, and now we're into the wick. If at any point I'm using it now only on a weekly basis, if on a weekly basis there's a close above 28.35, Trading right now, 2788. Um, intra, intra week, you can do a daily chart, but I prefer in this case to use a weekly chart because we're looking at the long term. If there is a close above that level, there's a really good chance we're going to make a leg D in within two months, and that will be above uh, 30.18, and that's on the, the uh, continuous contract. All right, so I want you to do that. Then I was asked the question about the GDX. The GDX is a, a different pattern altogether. Look at this Chapman Wave inside track has pulled back. This is the gold miners. This is the market vectors gold miners ETF. Uh, doing nicely, walking the nine period moving average, not breaking down, not doing anything. It's up 40 cents right now, 34.56. But here's the issue. The issue is that basically you could grab this, the outer parameters of the wicks of these three candles right here, well, two candles, but it's three candles altogether, and say, hey, the GDX is just in a trading band. The major thing will be if it closes under 32, that's two and a half points lower, that means you're going to probably be making lower lows and lower highs and head towards the 30 level of the 200 period moving average. But if it breaks, and not once, but it has to close decisively above the last high of 35.75, really has to get to 36.70. It has to push away from the 30, 35s into the 36s to establish that it wants to very much go for. And you can see here the monthly Chapman Wave inside track. Look at that resistance level. It's just repelled the price every time it's got there. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at the weekly chart saying that the GDX has built a really strong base in the 30, uh, I'm going to be making it a little broad, 31 to 29 area. That's just looking at the chart and saying, hey, um, that's the 200 period moving average of 30.24. Let me open this up so you know I'm talking apples to apples. This is the chart I'm looking at right here. And in this cup formation, what have we got? Now, there are a lot of lines. I don't usually like to have this number of lines. I can actually get rid of this because it's already achieved that. It's broken it. So when when something's done, just get rid of it. it, it just, it's just useless to keep it there. The dreaded H pattern. So this is another technique of mine that this is called, if I can just find it right here. Yeah, there it is. So there's a pattern that we look at always where the price comes down sharply and makes an arch formation, formation fails in an A, or a B, and then takes out the left side low and go quite a bit lower. That's that pattern there. So I'm always looking at three patterns, one straight up, one straight down. Two is cup formation. Three is an arch formation. And you can mix the, the two. Uh, so yes, one and three, that's one and two. So one and three says H pattern, call it dread H, because if it takes out that left side low, it can go a lot lower. And on the right side, very positive Y pattern, because if it takes uh, inverted, Reverse Y pattern. If it takes out the left side high, it can go a lot higher. So what do we have here? We have oh, and in this one, if it's a successful test at the bottom, you could then it takes out the arch high. Be careful because now you've got a cup formation that can go almost one to one to the upside. Well, where are we? We've taken out that high, that peak C high. We didn't take out the 2562 low on all those tests back in uh, uh, February and March. And here we are at 35.75. So that says that the target of 38.25 
is on the horizon. I don't want to do that right now other than to say what I would normally do, oh, too many lines, but they were all very important at the time. Once, they, once they're once they done, they're done. So let me just do this. Now you've got this very large cup formation, which is saying that all of this is key support. This whole area here is key support and that it should be a springboard to go higher. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, I, I don't want to get into the issue of the Mideast right now, but gold for me for forever. I mean, just as long as I can remember it, and I came from South Africa, I was born in South Africa, so gold is you know, something I know about, but you have Kruger Rands. Uh, but the most important thing is that gold has always been the go-to place when countries are fearful of something happening in the Middle East. It's just a kind of a tradition. So that's going to kind of help because I don't think that's going away very soon. So gold is holding very nicely. I'll be back in a moment. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Uh, Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. And uh, as mentioned in the den, we are all so appreciative and grateful that Tommy's doing well. He had some serious... Uh, uh, a serious operation and uh, he's recovering very nicely and that to us is very very important of course to him and his family is important but uh, best of luck to him and uh, get well soon so uh, downtown 39 at 39,000 live right now the S&P is trading oh let's see S&P is up 4.54 nice move there 
at 5191QQQ. Let's get to the QQQ. Uh, QQQs are trading at uh, 440.67, up 60 cents. IWM, the Russell 2000, now trading. It was the week at a link yesterday. Uh, today it is 2.4%. Oh, very nice. Turns out today it's one of the stronger indices, trading at 2 or 4.32. It's got a lot of work to do to try to get to that leg D, and that's going to be right there over the 206.35, was it? Let me just check. 206.15 level. Uh, to 206.16 starts your leg D. Uh, a lot of work to do, but it is acting very well right now. A couple of things that I want you to do. So gold, look at this. Gold is <clears throat> trading up 3 at two, three, uh, 2,326. Uh, you can see the sideways. Now, what I normally do when I'm looking at something like this, I say the pattern that we were talking about earlier in the show, the lowercase h, if it holds the left side low and starts to move higher, it can turn into a lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m, a second arch. Now, uh, something I'm a little worried about here is some of the people that I hear from regularly in my emails, I'm not hearing, and I checked yesterday all three um, uh, sites that I have, or well, email uh, sites that I have, are working. Um, so I'm not sure quite what's happening. I used to hear from some people regularly, and that makes me very concerned. I hope they're fine, or maybe they're just away or something like that. So um, in my regular email, if you want to send it there, then that might be the best way to go. So we're looking at gold holding steady. Now, what I want to do is to say, this is a pattern that I often look at when something stalls at the top. I'll show you something very interesting just now. Here we go. There. So it's in this kind of rectangle formation. So for those of you who trade futures, you know that I talk about this all the time. I say there are moments where at the close on uh, at 4 to 4.30 or even 5 o'clock, the market can hold very steady. And look at this. Look how long there was a trading band, very narrow trading band. Look at this, from there all the way to there when it finally broke down. So you went until past midnight last night, from 4 o'clock yesterday, where the, the trading band was basically 52.08 to uh, 52.12. It just stayed there, and then it broke down. And where are we now? We're at 52.11. Isn't that interesting? And not only that, I oh I didn't draw it in. I was going to, and then I thought, ah, I'm going to leave it for now. Look at this. There is a left side, right side price time match going to a particular candle. If I can just find the candle. Uh, oh, it didn't work. Okay, I thought it would work this time, but it didn't because it would have taken you to right there to the exact high. I love the way this happens. Look, this one didn't work out right here. Right? And that wasn't what I was watching. Oh, it missed it by a little bit. But look at that. The, the, the concept here is that in time, you can get back to a previous price, and then you, the test of that price is really important. So 50, a 52.17, the high of uh, 4 o'clock yesterday, double top high right there. What did we do today? We dropped all the way to 51.95, and what have we come back to? We've come back to 52.16.25. Unbelievable. Was that a 16 or 18? Oh, that was a 17. That was 52.17. Unbelievable. Within less than a point, and now it's, now this is the big test. What happens from here in the in the uh, E mini? All right. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but let's just do this. I want you to show you a couple of things that I think are very important. First of all, the sideways action here in gold is very important. Why? Because look at the dollar. The dollar actually is holding very nicely. The 9 period moving average did turn pink, but barely so. It's kind of in this range, making lower lows and lower highs after an absolutely fabulous move to the 106.50 area. And then where, where does it stall? Uh, it's, it retests it again, 
and then it fails, and it does a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And now what we're looking at is we've got a potential peak C1, C2 in the weekly chart, which acts like a D. So I'm going to be watching uh, the dollar very closely. Here. I should say we've been long since 2018 at 19. Here it is at 105. If we watch it go all the way to the 114, it's come down again. But that's not the point. The point is uh, the uh, dollar is holding quite well. If I go to the USDJPY, that's the yen, which goes usually in the trajectory of the dollar, but not always in the same uh, degree. It is rallying quite nicely off the low that was made right there, the 152 area, trading at 156 right now. But that is a peak D, and we've got until tomorrow at 4 o'clock to close. And I don't see it going to 159.99 to extend leg D. So this is going to be a peak D in the weekly and a peak D in the monthly. So are we getting ready for the EUR USD to start to rally? Well, let's just do this live. Um, the, the euro dollar currency pair made a peak A, pulled back after this big arch formation holding very nicely. A, there's the next high B. There's your C right at the 200 period moving average, which has been kind of a, a fulcrum up and down for quite some time. It's been a resistance for the last week. Let's see if we can get to 1.079. That's going to be really important. It's up just a little bit now, 0.01. And um, yeah, this is going to be very important. How does it how, how does it handle it? Um, and I want to go to the bonds right now. The bonds are down almost a half a point. They're down 10 30 seconds at 116 and 130 seconds. That is a peak C in the nine period moving average <clears throat> moved up. So that there's a chance that this could you really need to see it. So I didn't get maybe if someone typed it in to the den. I don't think they did. Um, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. 8.30, let's see, where is the time prior? Mm, no. Okay, pity. Uh, but the uh, I think it, they're expecting 2.10 or something, and it went to 2.50, something like well, 2.35. Uh, so the job listness incre numbers increased. And that says that, yeah, are we talking about recession? Or are we not talking about recession just yet? But usually when we're talking about something like a recession or a slowing in the economy via the jobless numbers increasing, the jobs numbers decreasing, usually you see the interest rates go down. So that's what we're going to look at. So what would uh, fulfill this buy signal, which is actually at a buy mode right now in the, uh, uh, this is the continuous contract of the U.S. Treasury bonds right there. Let's drag that over. You can see what I'm talking about, 30 year. Um, that would mean that it goes above the 116 and 26, 30 seconds, oops, 100 and 117 and 7, 30 second high of the 7th. And that's that's a little way to go. All right, I'll be back. Dow's down uh, 32 SPs unchanged. Be right back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tommy O'Brien. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, 
he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, so the futures are now turning down sharply. Uh, the S&P, I say sharply, I say sharply only because it went 52.16, the peak F in the five minute chart, peak D in the 10 minute chart. And then uh, the none of the, these and the one minute chart, you can see it's plunging. But the the nine period moving average hasn't yet crossed negative. It's just about to, but it hasn't, and it's gone right through the two hundred period exponential moving average. And one of the things that I say to subscribers to my opening call is, we want to do some buying, but we have to have a pullback. We're anticipating there was a mixed market yesterday. We're anticipating, and we're anticipating some weakness today, and that's that's unfolding to a certain extent. Um, it's not all that much when you think of it. I mean, look at this. I'll show you daily charts right now. Look. Oh, so let me just finish. So the U.S. bonds, if they're going to rally by next week, I'd say Wednesday or Thursday, they should try for the 100, and this is the bonds, the continuous contract, 117 and 830 seconds starts a leg D. If you're looking at the TLT, <clears throat> Um, that's the same sort of thing here, and it would take you uh, uh, 91.25 would start uh, leg D. Uh, so very important because uh, a further weakness says, whoops, you've got to be careful because you could see those yields, the TNX. Here we go, TNX. This is the 10-year. It made a peak. Come on, 10-year. There it is. So the 10-year trading at 44.94 did make a peak F and has pulled back quite sharply. So yields are coming down there, a little bit of a bounce today. So the 10 years is really probably the most important. Why? Because that's where most of the uh, rates are, you know, credit card rates, all these things, automobile, this is where 10 year is really the, the one that they focus on. So let me draw this to tell you what would happen if the yields started to go higher. You'd have to break this Chapway falling axe formation right here and go to, uh, let's see, that would take you to, to get to get the pink nine period moving average green again would take you into the 4630s. But even just to uh, break this trend line resistance, 40, 4575 would do it and you're trading right now at 4494, 4.49%. All right, let's get back. So the questions came in. Here we go. Uh, would I look at, uh, ENB. So this is one that I've followed for years and then I just completely forgot about it, which is a pity because this is Enbridge Inc. It's natural gas utility and also has a wind portfolio. I, I didn't see that until I just read it a short while ago. Um, if you're looking at natural gas, natural gas is just for the very first time in a while <clears throat> seen the 14 period exponential moving average in the weekly. I shouldn't say for a while. I should say for almost a year. 
since it broke down back in November of 2023. This is the first time that that nine period moving average, oops. Yes, except for that one big spike up in December or January where natural gas really had a couple of weeks of big action. Even then, the pink nine period moving average didn't cross positive, it deflected lower. So this is the first time that that natural gas has actually touched the 14-period moving average. This is a continuous contract. The UNG, uh, UNG is, yep, same thing. Popped up, it's at 16.28, up 33 cents. So here we are, just about to begin summertime. And natural gas, you see, natural gas has had just an abundance of natural gas. That's the reason why from the 138 round number high, well, let's see if that's still, that was a round number high, wasn't it? Uh, no, 128.88. I guess they got smoothed out a little bit. So that that high that was made back in 2022, plunging down to the most recent low in the 13s. Um, this is look how it's held in the monthly chart. Look at this very long term trend line, and this trend line right here um, says that that's kind of a base. Well, if that's the case then this can be seen not just as a bounce, but as an attempt for the very first time to establish some kind of higher highs and higher lows. So if you're looking at the UNG, I'm, gonna, I'm coming back to uh, uh, Enbridge in a moment. Um, if, if there is a move at this particular point into the 1680, 17.35 level, that turns the 1580 level into support, you're going to see a little bit more than a bounce in uh, UNG. All right, so now we can go back to ENB, Enbridge. Um, and someone who's had for a while loves to get the dividend. Congratulations. Here it is. This is a leg C in the daily chart. All the technicals are very strong. Stochastics at 93%. I love that. Um, what we're looking at here is the 200 period moving average just got hit. I, I'll make this a little complex. Uh, maybe I'll wait for my show to do it. But what I am going to say is this lower low here says so this is either a brand new A or a continuation of D going to E slash A. So I don't want to make it complex other than to say it might stall a little bit yet, the 37s with the 200 period moving averages. After all, it hasn't been here for since it broke down back in uh, May of 2023 for a year. It's been trying to get back. Now, the more times you hit the 200 period moving average with higher, higher highs and higher lows, this is making a higher high, but that low did sneak underneath that last one. This is a very positive pattern, and it says that it should try, if it can close above 38.50 in the next, the weekly chart, in the next week and a half, then this high that was made back in May, the week of the 12th of May, um, a year ago, at 40.30 would be your target. And the key support now is in the 35s. I like it. Congratulations. Uh, it's doing what you wanted it to do, and it's giving you a dividend. And the weekly monthly chart is in leg B. And the nine is still very weak. In the weekly chart, the weekly has turned positive. The stochastic is still weak at 70%, but it is rallying. Good. Congratulations. Very nice move. Next question came in. Can I look at Airbnb? Airbnb. Yeah, very sharp move down off the peak F in the weekly chart. The peak E at 170.10, but it also that very same day, the 7th of April, it had a 165 round number low. Man, those round numbers at the highs, we looked at NVIDIA, looked at all those stocks. Just amazing how beautiful that particular technique has been. And uh, so uh, this is, you know, I've always wondered about, I've never I've been to an Airbnb. I've been to places where other people have got the Airbnb, and it was very, very nice. Uh, somehow, other, I'm not sure why we haven't, but we just haven't done it. Um, but... It seems to me that from all the complaints of here, not the greatness, I mean, the fact that you can do this and get a very nice place, etc., uh, for a lesser amount than, say, at a hotel or whatever, that's something. But 
it seems to me that in this environment, when I was looking at the earnings potential, and I've had it on the list as if maybe it's one of the stocks we want to own for the subscribers to open call. I've kind of avoided it. We missed the big move up, and now I'm kind of hesitant. I'm thinking that it's not going to be quite so easy for Airbnb at this particular time. There might be other factors, but the price is, just says the 200 free moving average of 144. That might have to be tested. It's at 146 right now. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi folks, Basil Chapman C for Tommy O'Brien. This last segment before I go to my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour at 10 o'clock. Let me just say a couple of things here. That there, there is a mentality here that's changed with this move to the upside. It's by the dips. We can see that. Look, the Dow now is making a new recovery high. It's up 52 at 39,108. Uh, if you're looking at the S&P, look, it was down earlier on. Uh, it's kind of sideways. Um, it did rally. Now it's just uh, about almost unchanged. So what I'm looking at here, the buy modes are in place in all the all the key indices. I'll do this in my show coming up. We'll talk about the semiconductors because the semis are actually weak today. That's a sign that says be careful. I think when we finally make those peak Ds or E's in the daily charts, we might be seeing a bit of a pullback, and that could be Wednesday or Thursday of next week. That's the way I'm looking at it. I'm also a little concerned that the bonds should be rallying right now so that the yields are coming down. After all, if the jobless numbers are increasing, why would rates want to be high? I don't know. We're watching that very closely. However, 
What I'll do in my show coming up, I want to show you a couple of areas we must look at high-grade copper. That's always a tell. High-grade copper is just steady today, but holding very nicely. And there are a couple of other factors we want to look at. What, what is the implication with the VIX index uh, pulling back so sharply from 21.36 on the 19th of April to 13.24 right now? Uh, there's the Chapman Wave inside track. Propellant zone has slipped under it. Where does it close on Friday? Mm, it's going to be a big thing. So with that said, we're going to wrap it up in another moment or two, and then I'll do the news, and I'll do my show, The Tiger Technicians Hour. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and I want to tell subscribers, I will tell them again in my show, that I'll be doing my overview tonight because I might I might be away for part of the weekend. So and that's an, about an hour-long overview I do every weekend looking at what positions we have, what we're looking at, what we want to buy, why we want to buy, where the market should be going, where it's been, just kind of an overview, a very detailed one. So with that said, it's a little unusual for me to be actually beating the bell right now. So there's one other thing I want to look at. Yes, the XLF. So the XLF is very important. This is the S&P financial uh, sector uh, doing nicely. Here it is. It's running again. This is really important. I'll be back for the Tiger Conditions Hour in a few moments. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tommy O'Brien. And see you in a few.